the Joe Rogan experience. Well, that's one of the problems with some ideas that promote air quotes feminism is that they treat women as if they they can't see things the way that men do. So they need extra attention, exactly. or extra help or extra assistance. My favorite one with, with like that kind of like navel gazing critical approach. So let me preface just because we have to in this day and age. James, do you support feminism? Which one? Same as Black Lives Matter, right? Which right. one do you mean? So that said, um, one of my favorite patterns is is thing happens to everybody, and then feminists think it's oppression against women. Feminists blame patriarchy. So it's like, you know, people interrupt. And it's like people interrupt women. And so that's patriarchy. And it's yeah. like it actually happens to everybody, man. My favorite is mansplaining. Mansplaining? Oh, yes. yeah. We're, we're doing that now. Yeah, but... My favorite is man spreading, as you <laughs> oh, will know. Yes. I'm famously a man spreader, and <sighs> I have my profile on Twitter is, is man spreading to the maximum. Is that what you're doing in your profile? You're oh, yeah. It's actually funny. I was doing a thing in London last October. We were doing some talks, and I was actually explain. I had one video I did where I didn't even realize it, and I was man spreading like out of control. I mean, it was like embarrassingly bad. I looked at it the first time I saw the video. Right, but like, manspreading only matters if you're on a subway or no, a bus and someone's next to you and you're taking that's the up main too much. Thing. But that's what the problem is with it. Right. But they see the action at all. Like you got to train it out of people. So anyway, in <laughs> London, I was very, I was actually distractedly mindful not to manspread. Instead, I was telling the story to the crowd and I manspread to demonstrate what I meant by manspreading. Uh, I just did it again. And somebody snapped a f- picture of it while I was doing it and sent it to me. And I'm like, that's my profile picture. So I'm like in, <laughs> you know, like a jacket and a tie and I'm manspreading, like laughing or whatever. I feel like I read this. And I don't know if I did or not. Um, that men, their natural, the way their their legs sit in their hips, it's natural for their legs to splay out. Yeah. Whereas with women, their hips are built differently. That's and probably true. Well, it, can you find that out? We also have testicles. I don't know what, how you would Google, Google that. Yeah, but... I, I mean, I think you do. I know I do. I do. Okay. I definitely do. Just check. How dare you? Um, but you can't... I'd rather stand up. I mean, if I'm jamming people in like that, I don't mind standing. Yeah, totally. I hear you. Yeah. unless hear you. Unless it's a long-ass flight but or a long-ass um, uh, train ride, but I can keep my legs together. No, I hear you. I'm, I'm totally with you. But I think it's a natural thing. I, I think sit it makes sense. To spread out. And, like, I mean, you're fit. I'm fit. I actually have bizarrely large legs, and so it's actually very difficult for me to squeeze my legs Here together. Here it goes. The overall width of the pelvis is relatively greater in females, and the angle of the femoral neck is more acute. That's right. These factors could play a role in making a position of sitting with the knees close together less comfortable in men. Aha, you fucks. I suspect most men would suggest the reason for adopting the more spread posture in sitting would be the avoidance of testicular compression from the thigh muscles. The pelvic rotation goes some way to improve compression in both aspects. It's funny the way they say it that way. That's right. They have to say testicular compression. Well, that's because it's from masculinist science. Mm. It's masculinist white Western science making this claim. And it's from the independent. Can't, yeah. But when you have big legs, man, it's like, yes. it's like you know, if I know I'm going to have to walk a long distance, I have to wear the right underwear, I'm going to get chafed on my thighs. Yes, me you too. You have big thighs. Yeah. So there's a, it's a problem behind man's brain. It's like I need those like uh, yeah. Chuck Norris drop crotch jeans that he had those when he used to do his kicks. Dude, those are do the best. Do you remember those? I had a pair of those. That's hell yeah. Chuck Norris action jeans. Action jeans, that's right. Yes, I, I had those. That's right. Back when, were you doing karate? You know, you were doing taekwondo, right? Yeah. yeah I did I did like sport karate back then. So I Yeah, those were, those the, were the pants to have that's back right. then. That's everybody, right. Everybody had that stuff. <laughs> Yeah, those um, the people with large thighs, man. That's what boxer briefs were invented for. That's like, right. I can't wear uh, regular shorts. Like if I just yeah. wear shorts and boxer briefs, it'll chew my legs up. That's like right. If I work out, it, I, it kills me. Yeah. Yeah, and large ladies have that issue too. Right. If they're if, overweight. And fat studies would say that that is a, a problem of body blueprinting, and that it's a, actually a sign that fat phobic society hasn't designed all clothing around that problem. They didn't design clothing with fat in mind. 